Oh, man, this pillow sound. Oh, it feels so good. How many of you could use some restful moments? Maybe you've had trouble sleeping. <laughs> Maybe just the day has, you know, this is Friday. Um, for those that don't know that, this is Friday that we're recording this, but it's a now word for you whenever you watch this. The Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by the... Um, oh, you know what? It gave me the wrong translation. Let's hold on a minute because we're going to do this right. Here we go. Well, that was really strange. I had it with the right one. Okay, this is, by the way, it's, I'm Pastor Becky. I'm <laughs> sorry. Transformation Church. You see it right up there? This is Becky's Blurbs, and this is Friday, um, July 9th, my daughter-in-law's birthday. So happy birthday, Liz. She's a, I'm just, I've been really blessed to have the most wonderful son-in-law and daughter-in-law ever that God created on this earth. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not just saying that. But anyway, Matthew 11:28 through 30 in the Amplified Classic Edition says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. You ever feel overburdened? Here we are on Friday and people go, oh, thank God it's Friday. Um, because a lot of that is from you're overburdened. Um, you know, maybe you're a college student. And in fact, I actually heard the Holy Spirit say this. So I'm, this is a prophetic word. You're a college student and... Um, and maybe you're taking summer classes or maybe it's the regular school year, but right now you would be taking summer classes. Um, and you just feel like I can't take another day. You have got, you're working, you're going to school. Um, for some of you, you even have children that you're taking, you know, that whole thing going on. But wh whoever you are and whatever your circumstances are, I do know that there are college students out there. Um, you may even be going back to school and you're in your fifties or whatever. Um, God said, come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden and overburdened, and I will, say, he says, I will, and God's not a man that he should lie, cause you to rest. You saw me resting on my pillow. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Your, your three-part being, your spirit, soul, and body. Your soul is your thinker, your feeler, your doer. That's the part of you that just gets frustrated just you know your body gets tired but but your mind you know a lot of times you can't sleep you're you are tired your body's like i want to sleep but your mind won't shut up it just blah, 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 or just you know you're worried about stuff so you know whether you are a carpenter and and you've got a project and the, there's been too much rain or you can't get the proper um man i'm hearing things i wasn't expecting to hear you can't get the proper supplies um you know the trusses haven't come in yet and um, or you just can't have ordered stuff and, and the materials that you need aren't coming in. And the Holy Spirit, he's talking to you right now. Jesus says to me and you, come to me. So come to Jesus, all you who are who labor and are heavy laden, overburdened. I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls for mine this is jesus speaking my yoke is wholesome useful good not harsh hard sharp or pressing but comfortable gracious and pleasant and my burden is light and easy to be borne they used um they used to put a yoke upon oxen or whatever and and then that would you know then they would hit it and it would push forward and, and do their thing to, um, you know, to, to pull down the cornfield or whatever. Back in the day, I think the Amish still use yokes on their oxen and all that. I'm not sure, but you can look it up. But the, the whole thing was, is it, there is a yoke, you know, something that has to be there to get you to do what you need to do. But his burden is not heavy. It's not a heavy yoke. It's light. It's, it's comfortable. It said it's gracious and pleasant. His burden is light and easy to be borne. So what does that mean? That means if you're feeling so frustrated and, and some of you pastors out there, um, you're like, oh, you just feel like quitting. You know, we used to always want to quit every Monday. We were going to quit um, because we were taking on a burden that wasn't ours to take on. Even you college students, you high school students, um, you, you know, uh, moms, uh, while I can obviously relate to the moms, um, all the pressures of sometimes, you know, two, two income home family um, you've got, you know, work to deal with. You've got children to drop off. There's sports involved, etc. Um, and maybe you're training in sports. And, the, you know, just 
you've got one too many things going on and it's just been pressing and you just and then you get you come home and you turn on the news which I'm gonna say don't do that um, and you hear all the bad news that's going on right now um, and if you do want to watch the news go to go victory I'll put a plug in go victory dot um, com it's go victory dot com and they want I think it's uh, noon and five o'clock Eastern time they do a little um, the news with you know the Holy Spirit and the Bible and and um you know they're telling you the truth and but they're also telling you what God says right um and you just have to watch it I hope I'm making sense because <laughs> yes they're telling you the truth but they're also saying you know we we've overcome just like I'm telling you now you're frustrated you're tired you want to quit your mind won't shut up. You can't figure out how you're going to pay that bill. You can't figure out how you're going to make your house payment. You can't figure out what to do with your um, young adult in your family or, or teenager or whatever child. Um, maybe for you it's just like, I, I can't get this child a potty train. I went through that too. I had one that just waited till his third birthday and boom, you know, he finally did. I did everything with the first one who potty trained before she was two. The children are different. And sometimes you just have to come... I, I think we have we forget all too much how easy it is. It's so simple, and the enemy doesn't want you to know that all you have to do is pull back a little bit, um, you know. And you can, you know, what we all make time to do whatever we really care about. So just take because you should care about yourself. Invest in yourself, and take a little time, and get come to Jesus. And just say, Lord, I need refreshing. I cast the care of this on you. I give it and leave it there. Father, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but Lord, you're my financial source. You know, the number four in, in um, Transformation Church stands for healing spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. He's got it covered. You know, the, the same scripture that, that talks about salvation, you are just as healed as you are saved. You are just as prosperous as you are saved, basically, in the provision that's there for you and I, if we just receive it. We get salvation, and, well, yeah, we're going to heaven when we die, and we believe, you know, we're walking with the Lord. But just it's just as much a part of the package deal that you got because Jesus went to the cross that you're saved, but you're healed. Just as much as you're saved, you're healed. And that's spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, whatever you're dealing with. And so I, I just want to encourage you today. I hope I am doing a good job because <laughs> this wasn't coming out at all like I expected. But what the Holy Spirit said to me and he's saying to you, and I feel the anointing, the fire and the glory of God, that presence of God. He doesn't want you to have all that burden. He never, cre you're not created to handle it. That's why some people literally, they crack, you know, they just, just go, you know, have to go to the, the funny farm as we used to call it, the padded sail that special jacket that they put on you but seriously it starts with just wearing yourself down and you make bad decisions when you're tired you make um everything looks gloom doom and despair and excessive misery when you're that tired and everything seems so um, monumental and and it basically isn't really a big deal and not if you don't let it and you give it to jesus and he wants you to give it to him. He wants you to be in rest. When you get into his rest and just spend, you know, take 10, 15 minutes and just lay before the Lord and just say, God, I just throw myself, Jesus, I throw myself on you. Imagine yourself just, you know, getting crawling up in Jesus's lap and just saying, you know what? I give up. I just, I just, I just relax in you. I've done that before. And, oh, it's amazing. It's refreshing. And it's like, because this is one thing that Lord spoke to me when I was in my 20s and our my husband and I were having difficulties and and he got delivered from anger. That's a whole other testimony, but it was rough. I had to walk on eggshells. I didn't know if I would, what I would say that all of a sudden set him off and he would, this anger would come. And I was like, you know what? And, and I'm not, if you're divorced, do not accept any condemnation. That's not what this is about. But the way I was raised... I said it out of my mouth, not even knowing. I said, you know what? I don't believe in divorce, but I do believe that you will kill him. Just like you did um, in the Old Testament with Nabal and um, what was her name? Um, anyway, Nabal was a fool, it said. And I can't think of what her name was. And um, and her husband died. And then she became the second bride of David, King David. Um, but anyway, 
So I believe, I honestly meant that. God knew my heart. I absolutely meant that. Just kill him. I'm, I'm done. I can't do anything. I don't know what else to do. We had two toddlers. So I was tired. I was exhausted. I was, you know, at the end. And the Lord spoke to me. And when every time he does, you know, you, you almost have to laugh. But sometimes you're like, oh, sorry, Lord. But he said, if I can't do anything with Eddie, what do you think you're going to do? Wow, that was sobering. So you might as well just turn him over to me and, and leave it to me. And I was just set free. I'm telling you, I turned him over to the Lord. I'm like, okay, you. I guess that's true. If you can't do anything, what in the world do I think I'm going to do? So he's yours. And about four months later, God started dealing with him and, and during this four-month period. And then this day came where he got totally set free from the anger. Our lives turned around. Got, got you know, God told us to prepare for ministry. I mean, it, you know, I could go into the whole story. But um, the truth is, it was life transforming. And all I had to do was just relinquish the problem to Jesus. Now, I'm not calling, you know, I know that there's a fine line. We don't want to get in the ditch one end or the other. Like, you just say, turn it over to Jesus. And don't. You know, sometimes Jesus does give you some steps to take to remedy a situation, right? We all know that. So we're not talking about that. But usually, you know, if it's a heavy, heavy weight burden, um, it's not Jesus. He didn't create you to carry that weight. He doesn't want you to, and he wants you to give it to him. He wants you to come to him. It says, come to me, you who labor and are heavy laden, you're overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. There used to be a commercial when I was a little girl. Um, Calgon, take me away. And it was some kind of bubble bath or something that it, this lady, you know, she'd have all the kids and all this stuff going on, and she'd go and she'd take that bath and then totally refresh, the whole, you know, shut the whole world off. Well, you come to Jesus, like the Calgon bath, and you just let, you know, just... Put yourself on him and, and just lean on him and just say, you know what? I give that stuff to you because if God can't handle it, what do you think you're going to do? Seriously. So he can handle it, by the way. And a lot of times I hear the spirit saying to tell you this, you tie up his hands and what he's trying to do to relieve you from that situation by worrying, by, by saying the wrong, excessive worry, by saying the wrong things, by thinking the wrong things. Um, Philippians 4, 8 says, whatsoever things are good, lovely, of good report, etc. Think on those things. Um, so when you get that negative thought, you can't stop a thought from coming, but you can, like a bird, can hand, land on your head, but you don't have to let that bird build a whole nest and, you know, raise their family there. So when you get the thought, say, hey, that's not my thought. And um, so he says in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble. A lot of people see God as a really hard task mas taskmaster. He's not. He, he said, he tells you right here, I'm gentle, I'm meek, I'm humble, I'm lowly in heart. So you will find rest, you'll find relief and ease and refreshment and recreation or recreation. And I guess it's supposed to be, and blessed, quiet for your souls. <sighs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> say, Jesus, I just breathe in your Holy Spirit. I can tell you today, this is comes straight off the, off the press because I was feeling overburdened. I was feeling all of those things. And God brought the scripture to me and he said, you're not alone, Becky. And I want you to share it with my children because I love them. I, he's, he loves you so much. And he died to purchase for you freedom, freedom from sickness, sin, dis despair, um, over being overburdened his yoke is wholesome it's useful it's good it's not harsh hard pre or pressing but it's comfortable it's a it's just the right fit for you um it, it's gracious and pleasant and his burden is light and easy to be born so if it doesn't feel like it's light and easy to be born it's not god satan comes to steal kill and destroy but jesus came to give you life and, and life more abundantly in fact one translation said super abundantly and sickness is not super abundance. Stress and anxiety and feeling like you're in the pit of despair, it's not life. That's death. And that's, that's you know, messing you up. So Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest, refreshment, restoration. And um, so, Father, just if you're one of those people who say, hey, if you're talking to me, Pastor Becky, um, just raise your hands and lift your hands to heaven because that's where your help comes from and say, and I'm going to pray for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching. I break off the spirit of divination off of them right now. 
of um, uh, of cares and worry and anxiety. I break off the spirit of suicidal thoughts. I break off the spirit of anxiety, of um, being weighed down. I break those things off of them. I break every word curse that has been spoken over them. And I break every, um, and we just, Lord, you need to say this, Lord, forgive me for saying negative words. I cancel those words. Say, I cancel those words in the name of Jesus so that they can't have life. I cancel them. And Father, I pray your blessing upon my good words that I'm speaking, my my words that line up with your word. I, I, I just pray prosperity upon those words in Jesus' name. I cancel the spirit of strife because the Bible says wherever strife is, there's every evil work that you open up the door to every evil work. So we cancel that spirit of strife in Jesus name. And Lord, I thank you that you've not given a spirit of fear. I cancel the spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of power. We receive the spirit of power. We receive the spirit of power of love and a sound mind in Jesus name. Just the fact that it says you the opposite of Fear is getting the sound mind means you make bad decisions when you're in fear. Don't make a decision in fear. Don't make, in fact, if someone says, I've got to have an answer today. Um, you know what? No, they don't. One of the things I remember just now, and I haven't thought of this in years, that Joyce Meyer said, you know, people say all oh, this, that, and the other. But he, she said, if you were to die today, life would go on. They'd make a decision that they needed to make. Things would go just fine because you're not here. You can't change it. So just don't feel pressure. Don't let people pressure you for an answer. That's a word of God for someone right now. Um, if they can't wait, then it's not for you. That's their problem. Don't make it your problem. If you don't have a peace in your heart to give them an answer, don't do it because that means the Holy Spirit's not in it. So just, just if they can't wait another day for you to just get yourself in a better position at the feet of Jesus, just... You know, we've just lost that art of just loving him, being the Mary and not the Martha, being at, sitting at his feet and just saying, Master, I love you, Jesus. Ah, you're so wonderful. You're so marvelous. And Lord, we just cast every care upon you because you care for us and we know that you love us. Well, if nobody's ever told you before that God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life, I'm telling you. So if you were to die this second, I have a question. Would you go to heaven or hell? Because there really is a heaven to gain and a hell to avoid. And it can't be like, well, I'm a pretty good person. Because I get that answer a lot when I, I talk to people. But no, because it says no one's good enough. Everyone sinned and we fall short of being able to be good enough. It says so in the Bible. But Jesus came and he, he it's a free gift that all you have to do is receive the free gift. That when you die, if you receive this gift... You're going to heaven, plus he's going to lavish a wonderful life on you here on earth. So, I want you to say this prayer with me. If you want to know 100% that if you just died in the next second, that you would go to heaven, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe Jesus was buried, that he rose from the dead on the third day. I admit I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. Take my life and do something wonderful with it. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Woohoo! You prayed that prayer 100%. As a minister of the gospel, I tell you, when you die, you're going to heaven. See that logo up there? Go to transformationchurch.com and it says contact us. And there we have free material. You just say you have to ask. Just It'll say contact us. And then you just say, I would like some of the free materials. If you have prayer requests, if you have um, something you want to share, if you have some questions, and if we would love to bless you, and if we can bless you, we will. So go there and ask those questions. You can also go there and it says online, online giving. Those that give here, um, we are totally debt free. And we have the spirit of debt freeness on us. Um, so you sh this is good ground to sow into. And I thank everyone that does. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because you could be debt free too. And there's a um, a declaration offering, tithe and offering declaration. I I, I want to encourage you. You can print it out or just go on, you know, just read it off your phone or your device and um, do it daily. 
and watch what God does for you. And I would love to hear the testimonies. Um, if you're ever in Central Florida, it's transformationchurch.com.com. Dot dot com. We're in Central Florida. And we're moving around right now. In fact, um, <laughs> so there's we're about to get a different facility. Um, so you just contact us because I don't know when you're going to see this. And we'll tell you where, we're, where, where we are, okay? Um, but at this, this juncture, we'd love to meet you. Um, and if you tune, want to tune in, um, just subscribe. Um, actually, um, if you see this on Facebook and you, you like or whatever, then you'll get, you'll get this. Do So make sure you go to the Facebook, too, to get that. And um, um, when we're working on having the live streaming on, <laughs> excuse me, on um, YouTube. And for YouTube, if you will hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and then hit the bell, um, then you'll get those notifications as soon as um, that's working. And well, you'll at least get the, the replay of it. Um, so that's perfect anyway, because God's not any time and distance don't mean anything. And he already told me, even if you saw this five years in advance, it's a now word for you. So we'd love to meet you. We have breakfast first at this point, and so if you want to tune in, it's going to be somewhere between 10.30 and 11 um, if you're watching online because we breakfast in fellowship, and sometimes we get carried away. So, um, but I would, I would, um, I really, I hear the Holy Spirit say, insist, you should tune in. I'm telling you, the fire and the glory has been falling. Um, we got touched in 1993, and um, I just, the, the presence of God has never left, and it's just increasing, and um you just, you just need to tune in, I'm telling you. You don't want to miss out. All right, I'm Pastor Becky. Becky's Blurbs, TransformationChurch.com. Come see us. Tune in. Love you. And I will um, be back on, well, actually, Sunday. I'll be speaking, um, like I said, about 10, 30, 11. And then um, um, 4, 4.30 Sunday afternoon. And um, and it may be 5.30, depending, because there's, there's there's a possibility of somebody come, it, of a, of a time problem here. But that will be our second Sunday night of the month. Um, we do that every second Sunday night of the month. It's a healing service, and many people get healed. Well, you're probably getting healed right now in Jesus' name. So love you. I'd love to hear from you. Bye.